I saw Jesus crucified. I spoke to him as he died. I saw him in his struggle. I watched as he breathed his last breath and when he stopped breathing, I lost my breath too. The one who walked on water is no more. The one who fed 5,000 is now food for the worms and if he has been defeated, what does that mean for me? I thought that he would be the king who would rise up and rule our nation. I thought that we were the ones to bring truth and revelation, but it turns out we were wrong. I mean, maybe we imagined this all along. As I watched his body taken down from the cross, I saw my friend was gone. And he was the one who found me. How could this be? He must have gone before his time. It must have been too soon. It must have been an illusion or a dream. He can't be in a tomb. I can't come to grips with the thought that the man who claimed to be I am was slain by the hands of men. And then she burst through the door. Our friend Mary, she said, someone had taken the body of the Lord. So we ran to the tomb, only to find an empty room. And the stone was rolled away. I looked on the floor, and I saw his clothes. And that's when I knew he rose. Jesus is alive. He did walk on water. He did feed the 5,000. He did raise Lazarus from the dead and heal thousands. He did make the wine. He did talk to God. He did pray for those who put him on the cross and he raised back to life. Just like Lazarus, except for he would never die again. Jesus took death, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head for you. He laid his life down and he took it back again. Jesus is alive. Amen. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, we can do better than that. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We are so glad that you are here to join us on this Resurrection Sunday. Would you stand? We're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to start with the great old hymn of the church. It is 150 years old this year. You'll recognize the tune. You'll recognize the lyrics. Might not recognize the tempo quite as uh, <laughs> well. We're going to sing it a little quicker than uh, maybe you're used to. But we hope you'll join us in, in raising up, uh, up from the grave he arose. Join us as we worship. Oh, oh, oh. 
keep his praise. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph of his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain.
that seal the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your very with us or online we're glad that you're here it's a beautiful day we're gonna i don't care how many clouds are in the sky today is a beautiful day right all right so what we're gonna do this morning is we're gonna have ourselves a time just to get to know one another greet and greet and meet each other shake some hands uh you don't you don't have to go too far i promise uh but get to know somebody around you uh learn a new name today and then uh, when you hear our announcement video start up that's your cue to get back to where we're going all right so take some time just get to know one another
Good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. We are so glad that you are here with us today, whether it's online or in person. If you're new with us today, we would love to connect with you. So please find a Connect card back at the Connect Center in the back of the sanctuary, or you can find it on our website or app. We would love to have you fill out that Connect card and we have a gift to say thank you for filling it out today. Now let's talk about what's happening around the church. We are so excited to kick off a new sermon series next week where we will take a deep dive into the book of Nehemiah. Just like Nehemiah tackled the task of rebuilding Jerusalem's walls, we will take a close look into how we can rebuild, restore, and revitalize our lives and communities through God's guidance and faithfulness. We will be unpacking Nehemiah's epic story of faith, leadership, and resilience. So come along for the ride as we explore how Nehemiah's wisdom can shape our lives today. We are so excited to continue collecting items for Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes this year. Each month, we are collecting different items as a congregation. In April, we'll be collecting toys for girls ages 2 through 12. Examples of these toys are things such as dolls, hair accessories, blocks, and stuffed animals. Once you've picked up your items, you can bring them to the church and drop them at the table in the back of the sanctuary. Thank you for helping us reach our goal of filling over 200 shoe boxes this year. We will be having our Celebration Sunday on May 5th, and you don't want to miss it. We celebrate those who have decided to become members at Washington Alliance Church, those that have decided to take the next steps in their faith and be baptized, and those that want to dedicate their child or children to the Lord. If you're interested in being baptized or dedicating a child to the Lord, please check out our signups page on our app or under the events page on our website, or you can simply scan the QR code on the screen. Now let's talk about some things that you should mark your calendar for this summer. Mission Washington is a week where students will help serve the community, build relationships, and have a ton of fun. During the day, 6th through 12th grade students go into our city of Washington and participate in renovation and beautification projects to serve our community. After the workday, students will be a part of evening sessions made up of games, music, and dynamic Christian speakers. Stay tuned for dates and registration information. Are you looking for something fun and free for your kids to do this summer? Look no further. Join us for Adventure at the Park. We are planning an awesome adventure for kids ages 3 through completed 6th grade. Save the dates for July 9th through the 14th. Our first three days, July 9th through the 11th, will be at the Main Pavilion at Washington Park. And then July 12th will be at the Washington Park's pool where we will have a family pool party. But don't forget to join us on Sunday, July 14th for a bonus VBS day and a picnic. We hope to see you there. Before you leave, make sure you check out the Connect Center to stay informed about everything else that is happening around the church. Thank you again for joining us today in our mission to follow Jesus as we worship, connect, and serve together. As I was saying before, I want to make sure to say welcome. Uh, for those of you who are our regular attenders, we're glad to see you again. For those of you who are our guests, we're glad to see you possibly for the first time. So we're glad that you're able to be here with us this morning. Uh, we want to make sure that we say, uh, I want to say, I wanted to make sure that I say uh, thank you just for all the giving that we've had so far this year. We've been very grateful for that and we've been making sure that you understand that all of that goes towards the kingdom. And we're glad, to have that, glad that we get to serve him in the ways that we do. Um, if you're interested still in the ways to give, we still have you know, our three ways, which are the boxes in the back. You can give online, and you can give through our church app, and you can also uh, mail in your uh, money order if you'd like. So before we get too far into anything, can you please stand with me? I'd like to read, share a passage, and then we're going to continue into some worship. Uh, I want to just share with you, this is First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. 
We thank you for the beautiful day that we have today, Lord, that you allow us to be here, that you allow us to worship you. We love this day, Lord, because we just think of an empty tomb and a fulfilled promise. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the one who's delivered us and has saved us from the damnation that we were meant to have. You saved us and you brought us into your grace and your love and your mercy to go from what we deserve to a, 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 a gift that is beyond reach except through you, Lord, is, is phenomenal. So we thank you, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that we continue just to worship you and praise you and bring you glory today. And as we continue into our service and as Pastor Brian continues into his word, that all things, Lord, continue just to shine on you because that's what all this is for. It's not for us. It's just for you. Thank you, Lord. It is in your great name we pray. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing the night alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. Thank you. 
our Savior, our risen King, Jesus Christ. Lord, what a jubilant, glorious day that we celebrate here this morning. Lord, we pray that you would fill our hearts with joy, with just overwhelming, abundant, overflowing joy, that we might share that with the world around us, Lord, that the world around us might see that we are changed because we are connected to the one true God, the risen Savior. Lord, prepare our hearts now to hear from your word. Lord, allow our ears to be open to your truth. And Lord, not that we might just hear it here, 
but God, that we might allow it to change our hearts, our minds, and our very lives. God, we give you all the glory in your most high and holy name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive. The only time in history where death has been defeated. I'm going to enlighten you this morning in case you don't know. We cannot defeat death. It's coming. One out of one dies. It's like, man, you're really starting out gloomy, aren't you? But the good news is we can have life through the one who conquered death. The stone was rolled away. Death was defeated. Jesus is alive. You know, we, uh, we talk a lot about uh, this fact here at Washington Alliance, that the fact that Jesus conquered death, Jesus conquered hell, separates Christianity from all other religions on the planet. No other religion can boast a God or a leader that has been raised from the dead. Not Gandhi, not Confucius, not Muhammad, not Buddha, L. Ron Hubbard, Mary Baker, Eddie, not even Joseph Smith. I'm going to tell you this morning, they're still dead. Only Jesus has risen from the grave and defeated death. Jesus is alive. You know, our world has been conditioned this time of year to uh, celebrate Easter differently. And, and you've done that. You, you maybe are doing that or will continue to do that. We've got wrapped up in the eggs, in hiding eggs. Some, I don't know who started that. We got wrapped up in the marshmallow peeps, chocolate bunnies, and Cadbury cream eggs. Oh, God bless Cadbury cream eggs. Come on, right? Amen? <laughs> you know, but Easter is not even primarily about the dinner you're going to have after the service. Maybe 
preparing this big dinner for family and friends, all of those things are incredible, aren't they? And we can celebrate that and we can have joy and love around that. But the primary reason for today is to celebrate the fact that Jesus has risen. Jesus is alive. That's the purpose of today. It's celebrating the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. He rose from the grave. He conquered death, and he offers life to all who will receive him. You know, I'm going to be completely transparent with you today, if that's all right with you. That's what I want for you today. That's what I want for each one of you, that you would experience hope, that you would experience joy and peace that maybe you've never experienced fully before. That you would experience a love that the Father wants to lavish upon you. A love that the Father wants to, to transform your heart around that will exude out of you. That's what I want for you today, to experience Jesus. And truth be told, in just a little bit, I want to offer that opportunity for you if you have never received Jesus to give you an opportunity to walk out of here today, to turn off your device today, and to celebrate what Jesus has done that he did for you. I want to thank you for being here today. This is amazing, isn't it? Praise the Lord for you. I don't know what brought you here. I don't know what made you turn on your device today. Maybe you decided to do it. Maybe you were forced to do it. Uh, Maybe the Lord just somehow got you here, and you don't even know how you got here. You woke up, and you're sitting in a chair. You're watching this service be quite honest, I don't really care. I'm so grateful that you're here. And I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what uh, your impression of church is, but you may be like a lot of people in the world today that are very skeptical about church. What goes on in church, the people that make up church. Your experience may have been hypocrisy. People are very hypocritical in their actions, in their words, or it's just kind of holier than thou type of people. You know, there's this country club feel or these, these cliques that happen within church. And to that, to that, I would say, you're right, to a degree. I know that's something that we take very seriously here at Washington Alliance to eliminate as many distractions as we possibly can that you may experience Jesus for who he really is. You may struggle with what church represents and The fact that every time I go, people are trying to change me, and all the while they're trying to change me, they're asking me for my money. (laughs) I will say that offerings are very important. It allows us to do the ministries that we do, but that's not the primary purpose of this service or any other. You may feel like, like many, many, many people, I've had so many conversations with people that that struggle with the reality that I've just got to get things right first. Then I'll, I'll come to church because I'll fit in better. I'll, I'll be part of, of them a little bit better. It'll make more sense for me. Or maybe you struggle with the fact that every time I go or when I've been there, I've been hurt. I've been hurt by people who are not supposed to hurt people, and church is trying to change me. I want to be completely honest with you this morning. I cannot change you. This church cannot change you, but I know, I know the one who can. That is Jesus, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, who carried a cross after he was beaten, after his flesh was torn apart, after he had a crown of thorns put on his head. He carried his own cross, possibly weighing as much as 100 pounds, And he hung on that cross with nails in his hands and his feet, being spat upon, being abused, being made fun of. And you know why he did it? For you and for me. And you know what he was thinking about when he hung on that cross? You and me. The weight of all mankind was on his shoulders that day. That's our Jesus. And he is alive. He is alive and well. And we're going to talk about that this morning, and I'm going to do it unapologetically. Why? 
because it is way too valuable not to. It is life. Jesus wants to give you that life and give it to the full. Jesus said of himself in John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. One of Jesus' apostles, Peter, outgoing Peter, Peter was bold. He was kind of the the muscle behind the the disciples, of all the disciples. We read in Acts chapter 4, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he would preach so boldly with so much passion. In verse 12, Peter said, salvation is found in no one else, for no other name under heaven given to mankind, we may be saved. Peter was speaking of Jesus, the only name by which we may be saved. He would go on in 1 Peter 1 to say, praise be to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth and into a living hope. We just sung about that a little bit ago. A living hope, not a dead hope, not a maybe hope, not a high hope, so hope. It's a living hope, Peter says, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Church, Jesus is alive. And I want to help to prove that with two main areas today, two main ways that I believe and I know actually in my heart that Jesus is alive. And the first is through the scriptures. If you have a Bible this morning, I would encourage you to open it to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament. Uh, All four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books of the New Testament speak of Jesus' death, his resurrection. And uh, we're going to look at Matthew. We believe in God's word here at Washington Alliance. God's word cannot save us, only a relationship with Jesus can. But God has given us this love letter, and we want everybody, everybody to have a copy of that. And so we have these this morning, and if you don't have a Bible, we want to put one in your hand right now. If you would slip your hand up, we have men in the back that want to bring it to you. Just put your hand up. It is our gift to you. We don't want it back. Just uh, raise your hand. We'll get one of these Bibles to you. Uh, They say large print. I'm getting old. I don't know. Everything's small print to me. But we have Bibles in the back for you because we believe that everybody, everybody should have a copy of God's Word. Also here at Washington Alliance, before we dive into God's Word, we always go to Him in prayer. And we do that for a couple reasons. We do that in thankfulness. Thankfulness that He's given us His Word. And we do that in a way to prepare us. Because I hope I hope you didn't come here to hear me this morning because you are going to be sorely disappointed. Remember, I'm being honest today. I mean, if you did, thank you, but I'm just telling you, you're going to be disappointed. But if you came here to hear from the Lord, you will not be disappointed. And one of the main ways we do that is through looking at his love letter to us in his word. So we want to pray that. Would you join me as we pray together? Father God, thank you for your word. I don't know what we'd do without it. The truth and the authority and the life that is within it, the direction that is within your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have given it to us, your love letter to us. Father, as we open it up now, and some scriptures we've already read and others that we will read, Father, may you open up our hearts because you want to do something in our hearts today. Soften our hearts to you, Jesus. You are the way. You are the truth. Jesus, you are the life. You can offer us freedom today, Lord Jesus. You can offer us a future. You can change our eternity today. Oh, Father, we need you. We pray these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Look at with me, Matthew 28. I think we'll have it on the screen for you as well. The first eight verses say this. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, 
that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Verse 8, so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. If you have your Bibles open and you have a pen, I would encourage you to underline this one phrase found in verse 6, just as he said. The angel reminded the women that Jesus had already said this. Can I tell you this morning that Jesus does not renege on his promises? We live in a society that does that all the time. We use words like, I promise, I will, you can count on me. And yet so often, we fail to follow through with that. Trust is lost. And sometimes it's hard to get back if we even do get it back. But Jesus does not renege on his promises. His promises are true. Where we struggle is sometimes we're not getting the answers we want. And that's hard. I'm right with you. We're not getting direction we want. We're not getting things that we feel we need. And we ask God why. We may say, where? Where are you? See, this was true of the disciples. Jesus had told them over and over what was going to happen. This should not have been a surprise. He told them the Son of Man must be handed over to the authorities. He must be tried. He will be beaten and bruised. Even the prophet Isaiah, many, many years before, spoke of this truth. So it's interesting. When the authorities came to arrest Jesus, disciples were shocked. They were afraid. Many of them scattered and were nowhere nowhere to be found. Jesus was tried and convicted of one truth, of being completely innocent. It's believed that over 18 Jewish laws that were put in place to protect the accused were violated that day. Think about that. The religious leaders, those offended by Jesus' words, did everything they possibly could to convict him that day. Even to the point of convincing the governor to release a convicted murderer instead of Jesus. But this did not surprise the Lord because he knew it had to happen. Jesus willfully rode into Jerusalem that day. He willfully allowed himself to be arrested that day. He willfully was beaten. His blood shed willfully for you and for me. But yet, the disciples were still shocked. They were terrified. You know, it reminds me of a story I'd heard actually just this week. I heard a story of these three older ladies that were sitting in the back seat of a car and their, their friend was driving down the road and all of a sudden she looks in her rearview mirror and here's a police officer with the lights on and siren going and pulls her over and she pulls off to the side and he comes up and says, ma'am, may I see your license and registration? And she gave it to him and said, officer, if I may, can you tell me why you pulled me over? He said, well, ma'am, you were going way too slow. You're a detriment to yourself and to people around you. She said, with all due respect, officer, I I was going the speed limit. And she reaches over her shoulder and says, see, right there. The officer gets a kind of a little smile on his face. He said, ma'am, that's not the speed limit. That's route eight. You are on route eight right now. She said, oh, my goodness, officer, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. He said, you know what, ma'am, I'm going to give you a warning. Just be careful because you want to protect your, we want to protect you and the people around you. And as he stepped back to go back to his car, he looked in the back seat and he saw just terror and shock in the, in, uh, the faces of those three ladies. They're holding on to the seats in front of them and white knuckling and you can tell you they were very scared. And 
he looks at the lady and says, ma'am, your, your friend's in the back. They look terrified. Are they okay? She says, heavens, yes, officer. We just turned off a Route 1 and 125. <laughs> but they were shocked. <laughs> the disciples were shocked. And I would go as far to say that you may be too if you allow Jesus to come in and change you and transform you from the heart outward. The disciples couldn't believe what was going on. But Jesus wouldn't leave them hanging, so to speak. We believe that Jesus is alive because of the Scriptures. The second reason is because we have eyewitness account. We have eyewitness account of people that saw Jesus when he rose again. Acts chapter 2. I want to turn there just a moment. Acts chapter 2. A few verses, beginning in verse 29. It says, this is Peter again speaking. He's preaching with boldness to a large group of people. And he says this in verse 29. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. Peter knew that they would recognize that. Peter knew that they would be drawn to that statement because they know David. They know what he stood for. And so he pulls them in with that, and look how he goes on in verse 30. But he was a prophet, speaking of David, and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned in the realm of death, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all, all witnesses of it. Peter uses the word we. That is more than one. We all know that, don't we? There is eyewitness account of Jesus' resurrection. I love the story in John chapter 20. Remember all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, first four books of the New Testament, all of them speak of Jesus' death and his resurrection and speak just through different lenses, different people's viewpoint of Jesus meeting with his disciples and, and making himself visible to others. And in John chapter 20, he makes himself seen to Mary Magdalene to the point where she says, there is my Lord. I have seen my Lord. But before she makes that declaration, there's a conversation between her and a few people. She's sitting at the tomb and she's crying because her Lord is not there. And two angels are there and they say, woman, why are you crying? And she says, my, my Lord is not here. Jesus himself then speaks to her. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, thinking he was a gardener, asked without even looking, just, sir, have you taken my Lord? Did you take him? Don't miss this, church, because Jesus does something extraordinary in that moment. Jesus looks her in the eye, and he calls her by name. He says, Mary, and immediately... She knew who he was. She screams. And can you picture this? Can, can you put, your mind, put yourself there for a minute if you can. We all have good imaginations, right? Put yourself in that moment. Mary sees him. She's been with him for years, seen miracles, teaching of the greatest, the greatest kind of teaching. And she sees it is Jesus. She realizes that he did come back. He did conquer the death, conquer death in the grave. And she cries out, Rabbanai, meaning teacher. She wants to embrace him, but Jesus says, no, don't hold on to me. And Jesus says something else that is so applicable to me and you today. 
He says, go and tell my brothers what you have seen. Why is this so important for you and for me? Let me try to help us understand. That was the first time that Jesus had used that term for his disciples. He had called them friends, servants, but he had never called them brothers until this moment. It's interesting because they followed him, they ate with him, they slept in, in outdoors and tents with him, they saw miracles, they taught with him, they witnessed things that nobody on earth had witnessed firsthand. And yet when Jesus was arrested, one of them betrayed him and later would commit suicide. One of them would cut the ear off of the guard that was trying to arrest him that Jesus would put back on that man's head. And that same disciple would deny Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. Another disciple was walking around kind of aimlessly in that courtyard that day, and nine others scattered and were nowhere to be found. And yet our Savior did not hold that against them. And he called them brothers. And he welcomed them. Jesus does the same thing to you and me today. He calls us by name. He may be calling you right now by name. And the beautiful thing is just like with the disciples, he does not hold our past against us. And we all have a past, don't we? And if we're still alive tomorrow, we'll have more of a past, won't we? You know how it goes. You see, the world will condemn us. The world will remind us of how bad we are and how awful we are and all the difficult things we've done and caused people harm and pain and the like. Can I tell you this morning, God does not condemn. How do I know that? Again, his word tells me. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 there is no condemnation, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's good news. That's great news. I had the joy, and it really was an absolute joy, to be part of a service in town here at our city mission. I love this organization. I love what it stands for. It's a Christian-run, godly organization that is uh, just uh, exist to help people, people without a home, people that have struggled, different abuses, people that just need a new lease on life, people that just need help. They need to get back on their feet, and the city mission is there for them. The beautiful, beautiful organization. The residents there, they're required to go to church services every Thursday evening, every Sunday morning, and on Good Friday, there's a service in the morning, and we were there, many of us, some from this church and other churches were there to be part of that with them. And During the service, it was just amazing to see people in a moment realize their need for Jesus. There was such authentic, authenticism, is that even a word? I might have made that up, but you know what I mean. There was just a a realness there, an authentic something about that, that people were just, I, I want this, I want Jesus, I want to know him. We gave an opportunity for people to make that profession of faith, and several did. I'm not sure how many. But after the service, the chaplain there, he invited people, one of the crosses that we carried, there were several people that day that carried three crosses through the city of Washington, praying at different locations, all getting together and praying at the courthouse and then making their way to the city mission. Just a beautiful scene. And the chaplain there instructed people, if you have something you want to give to the Lord, give it to him today and leave it there. And it's this idea of leaving it at the cross. And we had a cross inside, and people were able to come up and take a little piece of paper and write down what they wanted to give to the Lord and leave it there and nail it to the cross. And they did. And a friend of mine took those off the cross, and we're going to pray over them as a church in the next several weeks. And I had the opportunity just yesterday to read through some of those, and 
they were all amazing, but a couple of them stuck out, and I want to just read a couple to you that may, you may be able to relate to. I don't know who these people are. I don't know who wrote this, and I don't want to know. God does. That's what's most important. This person says, I, I just want to feel at home. I want to be at peace. It's been so long. Maybe you can relate to that this morning. This person says, help me, God. My trauma, grudges, pain, help me to forgive. Help me to be more kind and patient. This one says, Jesus, help me to never turn back to my old life. Isn't that a good one? I never want to turn back. I'm so thankful for you. I love you, God. Be with me. And this one here might be the one that really hit me the hardest because I think this affects so many people and maybe you today. This person simply says, family members, accepting me and forgiving me. So many are struggling with forgiveness. They can't forgive, they can't forgive themselves and others can't forgive them. I'm telling you this morning, as sure as I stand here before you, there is one who will forgive. There is one who will forgive you of every mistake you have made, every sin that you have ever committed. There is one who will forgive you and put you in right standing with the Father, will give you hope, will give you freedom. The chains can be broken of your sin and will give you a new future, a new hope, and your eternity will be changed. There is one who knows you by name and calls to you right now. And there is one who will never leave you. When friends and family and co-workers do, there is one who will never, ever leave you and will never forsake you. That is to forget who you are. It's the one who created you. It's the Lord God Almighty. I want to ask you to be bold this morning. In that place at the city mission, we did the same. And Jesus was bold for us. He carried a cross. He was beaten for us. And I cannot, I just cannot end this service without giving you an opportunity to walk out of here knowing that you have eternal life. John tells us in 1 John, he says, I write all of these things so that you may know you have eternal life. And so I'm going to ask you right now as the music's playing. You're not worried about who's around you, who's in front, behind, to the side. This is the greatest decision you could ever make. Jesus loves you. He died for you, and he is alive. If you would like to leave this place today knowing that you have eternal life, to be freed from your sins, I'm just going to ask you to stand right now right where you are. If you're at home, I want to ask you to do the same thing if you're able. Be bold. Stand right now. I want to know that I have eternal life. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I want to be freed from the burden of sin. Amen. Who else would stand? Don't walk out of here. Don't walk out of here not knowing that you do not have eternal life. Jesus can give that to you right now. I cannot. This church cannot. It's only through a relationship with him. Who else? Anyone else? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to pray a prayer. Yeah, we can clap to that. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray a prayer. There is no specific prayer in the Word of God that says, you pray this prayer, you'll be saved. No, what it is is a belief and a confession. It's a belief and a confession. To confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. So if you have stood, and maybe you didn't stand, but you still want to receive Christ, I want to pray a prayer. And as I pray, I want you to repeat after me. And if you're willing again to be bold, I want you to pray it out loud. This is something to celebrate, not to be apprehensive about, nervous about. This is a, one of the, the, the most exciting moments that I get to be a part of. 
I hope you enjoy it with me. So I just want you to pray. If that's you this morning, pray this prayer. prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for carrying that cross for me. Thank you for the beating you took for me. Thank you for hanging on that cross, crucified for me. And thank you for being raised from the dead and being alive and well for me. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, to save me of my sin, to free me of my sin, and to give me hope and peace and a love that only you can give me. Thank you, Jesus, for changing my eternity. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand this morning? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, the Bible tells us that at one name, one person receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the angels rejoice. Can I tell you this morning, there is a party in heaven like we have never seen, rejoicing over each one who have given their life to Christ. We have something for you this morning. If that was you, we have a Next Steps booklet. We don't want to leave you just, what do I do next? There's great scripture in here. There's great uh, things to help you in your faith journey. We have this, our gift to you. It's on the table in the back. Somebody will be there. We also have an Easter booklet we'd love to give you if you would like that. That's back there at the table as well. Like we mentioned earlier, we want everybody to have a copy of God's Word. That's important. That's important. Amen? Hey, would you stand with us as we close our service? We're going to finish with some celebration. How about it? Let's sing together. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing now your love is the end and every one of you and we 
as a family, are welcoming new members to the family of God this morning for those that stood and accepted Christ today. Praise God. Uh, we want to remind you that there is a wonderful brunch um, in the lobby. Please stay and enjoy. Greet one another. Have a blessed Resurrection Sunday.